epithelial tissues are basically multiple cells that are stacked next to each other in a specific arrangement. The table over here on the right has a lot of information to it, and we'll come back to it in each sample we look at, so don't get overwhelmed. Now, epithelial tissues cover the exterior surfaces of the body and line internal cavities and passageways, and that's what we're going to focus in on this video. Do you know they also help form glands, but we won't focus in on that. A couple of terms that you'll hear mentioned throughout this video are the basement membrane and the apical surfaces. Let's zoom in to these images over here on the right and take a look at what those are. The basement membrane can also be referred to as the basal surface. It is the edge in which the cells are in contact with other tissues below it. Therefore, it is the base and we'll be using that as our reference point. On the bottom image here, it's that purple line right there. So now below it, right here, we would see other connective tissues. Now in contrast, on the top, we have our apical surface right there. It's our free edge, and it's not in direct contact with other cells. We can look at other images here. We have our basement membrane, and then we have our apical surface above. Again, basement membrane on this one. Below it, there's other tissues. Above right here, we have the apical surface, and, with, and there are no cells that it's in contact with. So how do we name these epithelial tissues? Well, the first step is to identify how many layers are there. If there's a single layer, we consider it simple. So in these examples over here, we have a single layer, single layer, and a single layer. So the first word is simple, versus these examples over here, we can see there's multiple layers on top of this basement membrane, multiple layers, multiple layers. Therefore, the first word is stratified. The next step is to identify the overall shape of these cells. If it is flat, they're considered squamous or squamous. So here we have a simple squamous epithelium versus stratified squamous epithelium. Note that we name them based on the shape towards the apex. Likewise, here we have cube shape or cuboidal or column shape or columnar. Now note there's a couple of odd ones down here and we'll come back to those later. So first let's look at simple squamous epithelium. Here we are looking at a tissue sample at 100 power or magnified 100 times that of our normal vision. It's important to note that when we're looking at these slides they've been prepared for us with stains to enhance the color. Usually, a 3D sample is cut with a microtome to produce a thin sample. This sample is mostly for demonstration purposes, but here we are looking at from the top-down view. So here's our eye, and we're looking top-down on it. So imagine that this tissue layer here of simple squamous epithelium has been peeled away from the basement membrane. So now we are looking at the epithelium from this top-down view. So let's zoom in to 400 power and see what we can see from there. Now magnified to 400 power, you can see much more details. We know this is a single layer of cells. That's the thickness of the entire sample. This is a superior view. The lighter staining regions, such as right here, that's the cytoplasm. Whereas the darker staining regions right here, that's the nucleus. You can even see little dots in here. Those would be the nucleolus, the condensed regions. With microscopy, it's difficult to identify individual organelles although there are some samples with stains that we can see some of those structures with a bit more detail. To see those organelles more clearly, that's where electron microscopy excels at this. So this is a unique view, the top-down view. Let's look at more three-dimensional sample next. This is a sample from the kidney, the kidney being a three-dimensional organ shaped like a kidney bean. It does not naturally look like this. We've taken a thin cut through the kidney, and now we're looking at a stained two-dimensional image. This is one of the many filtration units of the kidneys, the renal corpuscle. The tissue we're interested in looking at is at the tip of the arrows, the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. Now we can draw the overall outline of those cells, or rather the tissue, to get a better, better idea of the shape. So if I go just on the other side of the cells and circle around all the way to here, now we can see that there is a nucleus here and relatively flat shaped cytoplasm on each side. Nucleus here, flat cytoplasm on each side, so on and so forth. 
So in this case, we have tissues that are a single layer, thick, so that's our simple. They are flat in shape, squamous, and epithelium. Now, I've listed a couple of locations and functions over here to the side. You're not going to be responsible for that in our course, but your A&P instructors may require you to know one of these. So it's here for completion. Now, you may recall that organs are made up of various different types of tissues. Therefore, when we're looking at these slides, it's very common to see different tissue types. As such, in this one, we can see simple cuboidal epithelium over here, as well as these tubules over here and these tubules on this side. So the tubules are kind of like straws. The one pointed over here on the left is like a tubule that was cut in cross section. If this were a straw for drinking, the fluid would flow through the middle right here. On contrast over here, because the kidney is 3D, depending on the cut, we're going to be going through these tubules and oriented in different directions. This is more of a longitudinal cut. So if this were a straw, fluid would be going roughly from this direction to this direction. So in this case, we can draw our basement membrane, roughly speaking. There's one right there. And on this tubule, roughly a basement membrane right there. So from here, we just go through our naming scheme. We have a single layer of cells. Same thing here, single layer of cells. So we have simple. Overall, they are cube-shaped. Cube-shaped over here. Therefore, cuboidal. So we have simple cuboidal epithelium. And again, here's a couple of functions and locations, not important for us, but important for A&P. This sample from here comes from the thyroid. The thyroid has all these follicles, and inside of those follicles, we have colloid. So this is where the thyroid hormone is stored. Same thing for the naming scheme. Start off by identifying where the basement membrane would be. And then from there, you look and see how many layers are there. There's a single layer there between the base membrane and the apex, or the lumen here. Same thing here. Base membrane, lumen, single layer. So we have simple. Next part, these are cube-shaped. Note that they're not always perfectly cube-shaped, namely because these cells, when they're prepared, they either shrink or swell. Usually they shrink, but you don't get, get the overall idea. They're mainly cube-shaped. Sometimes they might be a little bit taller than the cube or square, but they're relatively cube-shaped. And again, epithelium. So we have simple cuboidal epithelium. Now we're in the intestines at 400 power. The digestive system is an adaptation of one long tube starting from the mouth all the way to the anus. The intestines are specialized organs that function in the absorption of broken down nutrients to be transported and processed elsewhere. They also have a number of folds to increase the surface area and thus the rate of absorption. You can't see much of the folds at this power, but this slide, it would go up further and back down. This would be one fold. Furthermore, we can see these finger-like projections right here. Those are our microvilli. They also help increase the surface area and thus help with absorption. So we start off by drawing roughly our basement membrane, the basement membrane on the other side. And then from there, we identify how many layers this is. Well, we can see, clearly see the, the borders on most of these cells pretty well. And we can tell that they are overall a single layer. So we have simple. They are columnic in shape. Note that they are very, very long compared to their width. With cuboidal, you might notice that sometimes they're a bit long here, but overall columnar is much, much longer than it is wide. So therefore, we have columnar, so simple columnar epithelium. This next sample comes from the trachea, the windpipe that transmits air into and out of the lungs. This tissue type kind of breaks the naming rules, but the nomenclature makes sense pseudostratified columnar epithelium. It's very similar to the last tissue, but the appearance makes it appear stratified. 
Pseudo means false, so pseudostratified means falsely stratified. Let's draw the basement membrane. So roughly right here is our basement membrane. Now we can see that there are nuclei at various levels. Sometimes we see them here at the bottom or more towards the base. Sometimes they're more up towards the apex. So without really looking at the borders of the cells, this looks like it's stratified. Now let's outline some of the more obvious cell borders. Now on particularly this one right here, you can see it starts at the base membrane and goes all the way up to the apex. Here's another one. This actually, this one's actually really good. And then perhaps there's another one right about there. Although we do kind of lose it. So at first it looks stratified, but at closer examination, we can show, see that this is not the case. This is largely due to the fact that there were three dimensional cells that were cut into thin sections to make them appear 2D. That's where we come up with the word pseudostratified. The next word, columnar, they are column shape and epithelium. So pseudostratified, columnar, epithelium. Now a little bit of a disclaimer. The OpenStax images I'm using do not differentiate ciliated from non-ciliated in their illustrations of pseudostratified columnar epithelium. This slide coming from the trachea is ciliated. Thus, we see these tiny finger-like projections. They're a bit longer relative to the cell's height compared to the simple columnar epithelium. And in this case, they filter out particles from the incoming air as it moves towards the lungs. In contrast, if there were no cilia, none of these right here, it would be considered non-ciliated. That specific tissue can be found in parts of the reproductive tract and is involved in absorption and secretion. Review time. So far we've covered all of the single layered epithelial tissues over here on the left. Next are the multiple layers over here on the right. And for naming them, again, we locate the basement membrane, identify their multiple layers, and then identify the shape of the cells opposite to the basement membrane, so on the apical surface. So here we have stratified squamous epithelium, or stratified cuboidal epithelium, stratified columnar epithelium, and then this odd one down here will go over last transitional epithelium. Now, we're going to exclude stratified cuboidal and stratified columnar epithelium because they're fairly uncommon in histology labs, at least in A&P, but they can be found in the ducts of some glands. So let's start off by identifying stratified squamous epithelium right here. This is a slide of human skin. When you look at these samples through a microscope, it's helpful to orientate yourself to what you're looking at. Here we're at 40 power. The epithelium is up here at the very top, that's the darker part, that's the epidermis. But the skin is multi-layered with the underlying skin here is the dermis, and it contains a lot of connective tissues. Once we zoom into 100 power and focus our lens, the tissue in the dermis, we can see some glands over here, some vasculature, but mostly it, it's this dense irregular connective tissue and it contains a variety of different cells and extracellular matrix products. Now we're here at 400 power and focusing below we have the dermis which we're not really seeing much of right here but we have the epidermis right here on top and the epidermis is an epithelial tissue layer so it contains mainly cells. Now We'll focus in and find a good image for illustration purposes. Here's a still image at 400 power. Let's draw the basement membrane. All right. So below that line I just drew is the dermis right here. It's a connective tissue layer. And above it is the epidermis. That's our epithelium. Step number one, identifying this tissue type. How many layers are there? Well, we can clearly see that there are multiple cells stacked on top of each other, therefore it is stratified. Step number two, what are the overall shape of the cells? Well, at first glance, you see a lot of round ones down here, various different shapes, but the key is once we get to the apex right here, we see a lot of these flattened or squamous styled cells. So therefore, we have stratified squamous epithelium. Now, 
you may have noticed that there are no nuclei here at the surface, and that has to do with the process of keratinization. So technically, this would be called keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. You may see other tissue samples coming from, say, the mouth, in which they have cells in the surface level that have nuclei. In that case, they would be called non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Transitional epithelium is stratified and specialized to allow for stretching. It's found in the urinary system and the urinary bladder and other associated ducts for urine to be stored in and transported through. First, let's draw the basement membrane. All right, so we can clearly see that there are multiple layers of cells, so we know it's stratified epithelium. Next, we need to look at the overall shape of the cells, and we can tell that there's actually quite a variety of if we look at the, um, at the cells closer to the apex and outline them here, you can see how they're, in this case, kind of oval shape, but rather large. Just a few examples. Now, if we compare those to cells more towards the basement membrane, they're generally not quite as large. And their shapes are more roundish here versus more oval. So the cells here on the apical side are known as umbrella cells. And along with the cells below, they help create this watertight barrier similar to, say, like an umbrella with the rain. These cells are capable of being stretched. Think of the urinary bladder like a balloon. These cells are in a relaxed state in this image, but if enough urine was to be stored in here or passing through, these cells from this relaxed state will actually stretch out and get wider and kind of appear more squamous or flattened in shape. So do note though that we do have nuclei here as well in these cells. So we can see clearly these cells are larger than the ones below. Sometimes you might hear that they have this scalloped appearance to them, um, but transitional epithelium, generally the, the rules kind of go out the window from our original chart, but hopefully this gives you an idea and some different tips and tricks on how to identify it. This will conclude our video on epithelial tissues, also known as epithelium. This video focuses on epithelia that covers the bodily surfaces and lines the internal cavities and passageways. They do form glands, but that will be covered elsewhere. The big thing about epithelia is that they're made up of mostly of cells with numerous different junctions to hold them together. In the next video, we'll cover connective tissues, in which there are less cells per volume of tissue, but it's their products of the extracellular matrix that they produce and maintain what really matters.